celebrate our risen Lord. I have a few announcements that I'd like to lift up and then we'll pass the microphone around if anybody else has an announcement they need to lift up. The first one, uh, this Tuesday, our children's program F3 is going to begin working on their short presentation. Um, they are going to lead the service or be the, the message on March 15th. Uh, they're going to do a message about the Easter story. So um, if you've got some kids, this is a good time to get them so that we can uh, start preparing and learning lines and a couple songs. It's going to be real cute. So thank you for those that are organizing that. Uh, and then not this Wednesday, but next week Wednesday, two big things are happening. The first one, it is Ash Wednesday, uh, which means we're doing a special service. We do it in combination with Grace Lutheran and the Presbyterian Church. We'll be here at 7 o'clock. And it's a way for us to get ready for Lent, that time of preparation before Easter. Um, so that again, it's at seven o'clock Wednesday night next week. I hope that you can join us for that. And then during the day at noon on Wednesday, um, we will do our next dive deep uh, topic and we'll be talking about the gospels. Uh, so this will uh, spend some time, we'll have a little lunch and then we'll spend some time really talking about where did Matthew, Mark, and Luke and John come from? Who wrote them? and why were they chosen, and not others, and all those kinds of questions. So we'll spend some time really looking at the Gospels. Now, for those that can't make a new Wednesday meeting, we are going to do an online uh, version of that as well. We tested it last month, it worked great. Um, so if that's better for you, it'll be on Thursday night, and we'll send the details out on Facebook. So keep an eye out for that so that you can uh, join us that way if that's easier or more convenient for you. We'll do an online one as well. Those are all the announcements that I have. Are there any others that people have? Raise your hand. Just put your hand around. Glad you come around and grab it. Uh, today we'll be celebrating Dorothy Irwin's 92nd birthday, but she's not going to be here. We'll have cake and ice cream down the fellowship hall. We'll send some cake up to her place for her. So she'll know we're thinking about her. We'll have the card and so on to sign next week. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Yes, just wanted to remind everybody that uh, next Sunday, uh, after coffee hour, I, I have a bulletin in the back, but there, uh, there's a brass group that's coming into the library. Sunday afternoon, I, I know it's going to be a terrific concert. They're tied in with uh, Saginaw Valley State University, I believe, and uh, uh, it's all all brass. And uh, be nice to have as many of you and your friends that could be at that uh, for uh, supporting the library. Thanks. Oh, it's free. How much was that? <laughs> <laughs> Where's Gary? <laughs> the other announcement I can think of uh, looking at Dorothy there is this Friday, the Women's Life are, is doing a spaghetti supper here at the church. Um, it is by donation and uh, all proceeds are going to benefit the Vassar Ministerial Alliance and the Vassar Food Pantry. So come on out, get a good meal. And uh, to that minutes from five to seven. Is that correct? From five to seven. So hope to see you there. Okay. Seeing no other announcements, I'm going to ask you to stand and greet each other with a sign of God's peace. Thank <laughs> you. 
From Psalm 139. Happy are those who walk in God's ways. Blessed are those who are God's commandments. Faithful are those whose eyes are fixed on righteousness. Joyful are those whose hearts are filled with praise. Come, let us love the Lord our God. We come to worship the one who leads us in the ways of life. And our first hymn is Oh How I Love Jesus, page 170. Join me in our opening prayer. Holy Spirit, guide us as we walk in faith and guard us against the powers that would draw us away from your love. Help us live according to your commandments that we might live long in the land you have prepared for us. May our words and deeds bring life and faith to others as we hold fast to the gift of faith. Be near us each and every day, and bless us with your light, that our days may be filled with grace. Amen. This time as a church family, we lift up the voice and concerns that uh, are on our hearts or those that we know and love. I have a couple to get us started, and then Roger will come around again with the microphone. The first one, uh, we've been praying for Debbie Statulosa. Uh, she is still um, needing extra prayer. She's still got a lot of fluid that's building up that they have to continue draining. And she's going to be starting chemo on Friday. Um, so just keep her in prayers, especially as um, start that for me. That's scary. Um, I want to pray for Pastor Penny Parkin um, and the Fairgrove Church and the Sutton Sunshine Church. They've just been on my heart lately, so I want to just keep them in prayer. Um, that they can continue to love and serve the Lord. And then, uh, as you can see by the flowers, uh, we had a funeral on Friday. Uh, Marilyn Quick passed away, um, but she was uh, she was ready, and she she died with a smile on her face. And uh, so we celebrate the life that she had, and uh, just keep the family in prayer now, the Quick family. As, um, Hi. Now, they, yeah. hey, buddy, how you doing? Uh, are there any other prayer requests that people would like to lift up? I asked for prayer once before for our great-grandson. Um, his name is Jackson. He's suffering from a, a rare disease that comes um, when you've had a lot of strep. It seems to affect small children. He is um, six years old at this time, and it's called PANDAS that he has. 
and um, it it affects the brain. It affects the immune system. It's 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 a a very difficult thing. He's making progress, and thank you for your prayers. There's a thanks here for the prayers for my brother Bill and my brother-in-law Don. Don is doing much better, but still needs a lot of prayer. My brother and Bill just finished. Uh, apparently, he did quite well in rehab because they send him home, and he'll be doing rehab there. But they're both uh, uh, still in need of prayer, but uh, very thankful for what has been sent from here. Uh, a friend of mine uh, lost his first son in 2006, and then turned around and. Uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, his second son, at, uh, the first one was 21, and this time was 33, went to into bed and laid down and, and passed away. I'd like prayers for, uh, for Doc. Uh, he, uh, I sang with him for a lot of years, and it's been really rough, as many of, of us have went through things, uh, or many of you, I should say. And also, my cousin uh, uh, in Canada, her granddaughter is in need of prayer, Angela. I'm not sure what all it is. Appreciate it. Yes. I get one. I guess I don't need a microphone. But our interim pastor, Don Wixom, needs prayer. He's in the hospital and wasn't able to be with us today. And is especially facing some real health challenges, and he is not going to be able to be with us for at least a couple of weeks. So I'd really appreciate your prayer for us at the Presbyterian Church. Absolutely. Thank you for telling us. So we didn't hear that Don Wixom, who's the interim pastor right now at the uh, Presbyterian Church, um, is facing some health challenges, is in the hospital right now. So I want to keep him in prayers. Um, and uh, pray for the new pastor, too, whoever's coming for that church. That, um, thank you, here. Thank you. I'd like prayers for my Uncle Jan, who is battling cancer, as well as um, the family of Sarah Klein, who passed away a couple of weeks ago. For the last two or three years, we've been praying for some friends of mine. Uh, they were battling cancer. And two weeks ago tomorrow, Margaret passed away, and a week ago tomorrow, my friend Mary Ann, who has battled ovarian cancer stage four for 10 years, finally gave up her battle. We grieve with you, but we also celebrate too that they're beyond pain and beyond. If you would, will you join me in our prayer song? Heavenly God, once again, we stand before you and lift up our prayers, our joys and concerns, the, the thoughts and the, the hopes and the, the dreams and the frustrations and all the parts of being <coughs> human. We thank you, Lord, for your presence and the space that we've lifted. We thank you, Lord, that all of the situations that we allow and not our hearts, that none of them walk alone, that they all walk with you. Be with each of us, guide us, help us be your hands and feet here, that we can show your love and peace to a hurting world, that we can bring healing and hope to those that have doubt and despair. We thank you, Lord, that we can always pray, pray the prayer your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So today uh, it's time for our, our offering, so I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward. But um, today is also Blanket Sunday. So um, part of our mission here in this church is to provide blankets for those that are in uh, situations of um, flood or whatever. These blankets go and are distributed out uh, through, the, through an organization called Blankets. Anyway, um, every place uh, costs about $10, so if you'd like to donate one, you can. If you did not make out a heart, um, you can just put it in the, the offering, and we'll get it up on the thing for next week. Um, and thank you for all those that you and we give you back these gifts that you first gave to us. And we ask, Lord, that they be used to promote justice and love and hope to those that are hurting in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
this time, I'm going to invite the children to come forward, please. For the children. Isn't that great? Who would have thought that I'd have a Mickey Mouse bag, huh? Who would have thought it? Who would have thought it? Okay. Drop them on. Okay. I do like Mickey Mouse. You are right. So I have a question for you. Um, a couple days ago was a holiday. Do you know what it was? Valentine's Day. Very good. And what does people what do people do on Valentine's Day? What do they do? Um, so there's a bunch of and chocolates, and they show people back in the show that they do respect their Yeah, yeah, we just yeah. give little little things to show people we love them, right? My dad gave me flowers and chocolates. How oh, sweet. <laughs> gave you flowers and chocolates, too? That's really sweet. Nice. Well, did your class exchange Valentine's? Do you bring cards or candies or something? Did you do that, Joshua? Your dad got you a unicorn. Wow. That's a special Valentine's. So I brought you guys all Valentine's today, too. They are little boxes of cereal. And it says, I'm seriously happy you are my friend. Happy Valentine's Day, love, Pastor. <laughs> and I have enough for everybody. But look at all these different kinds we have. Right? Don't take one. Don't take one yet. Don't take one yet. There's only one corn pack, and apple jacks, and fruit loops, and frosted flakes. There's all these different kinds. Well, wait, 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 wait. Here's my question this morning. How do you pick which one that you want? How do you decide? No, 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 no. How do you decide? Not which one do you want. How do you decide? How do you decide? Which one do you like? Yeah. So flavors, right? But there's so many choices, don't they? All taste good. No. <laughs> those are those are your two favorites. See, everybody's got a little bit of different favorites, right? We all make choices. Have you ever been to the grocery store and seen all those kinds of cereal that's down there? There are so many choices. You know what? Sometimes, yeah, there's Fruit Loops and all kinds of things. So some like the cookie ones. I like cookie ones. They're like squares, uh -huh. and then they have the chocolate inside. Yeah. So, no, 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 So, sometimes there are so many choices in life, it gets hard to pick. And your parents and your grandparents and all the people here, they feel the same way. There are so many choices, we get exhausted. Do you know how we get unexhausted? How we get energy back after so many choices? Sugar. Well, sugar helps. <laughs> Coffee, caffeine, and sugar. Okay, well, this turned into a science lesson. When you so the glucose in your body. Um, rare. One of the things that doctors have found is that when you get overwhelmed by all the choices in life, so many different kinds of cereals, so many different choices. Just relaxing and praying for you helps you find your way. You know, oh, I can make some choices. Here. So I want you to think about that. When you, ever, whenever you get so many choices, just take a moment and pray. Oh, can you do that? Take a deep breath. We're gonna do a. We're gonna do what's called a breath prayer, and you can do it with me. So we're gonna breathe in and we're gonna see. Um, when you breathe in, say, dear Jesus, and when you breathe out, say, help me be like you. It's a breath prayer. Can we try that real quick? Ready? Dear Jesus, help me be like you. Try again. Dear Jesus, help me be like you. One more time. Dear Jesus, help me be like you. Now, wait for it. <laughs> I'm going to let you all pick your pick one, except, wait, Asher. You can't pick one for yourself. You have to give it away. So you have to pick one for somebody else and then give it to them. So pick one. Everybody pick one and then give it to somebody else. Can you pick one? You have to trade. Yep, you have to trade.
Do I pick one, Elliot? Okay. Well, now you got to trade with somebody else. Who are you going to trade with? So you had to pick a cereal, and now you have to pick somebody. So many choices. Dear Jesus, help me be like that. All right. No, I don't think this is working. All right, turn back to five. Make sure Asher gets the yellow one. Pick one and pick one and go back to your seats or go back to junior church. And we'll write this up as a lesson for you never know what's gonna happen. Did you get one? Everybody get one? Pick a good one. Fruit loops did not move. So if any adult would like a box of fruit loops, you're past I love it. You are right. Um, our hymn hip- of preparation this morning is Take My Life and Let It Be. It's on page 399. They remain seated for the same. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Deuteronomy 30, verses 15 through 20. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, and to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now Matthew 15 or Matthew 5 verses 21 through 30. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, 
is unanswerable to the court. And anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still together on the way, or your adversary may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We pray with me, please. Lords, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight because you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. For the sermon this morning, I changed my mind. I had another idea. I had earlier on the week another direction I was going to go on and wrestle with scripture on, but I changed my mind. I made a choice and I went in another direction. I'm going to tell you why, but first let me tell you about part of my day yesterday. So our plan for yesterday all week has been to go to the theater and see the movie Parasite. We hadn't seen it yet, and we were excited to go because it's the first foreign film ever to win the Oscar for Best Picture, and I was excited to see it. So in the morning, I chose to work on my sermon a bit, went in my office downstairs, and while I was downstairs, Deb decided to call her mother and invite her to join us for lunch and to go to the movie. Sandy thought it over, and she said yes. Deb called down, told me the new plan for the afternoon, and said, how do BLTs sound for lunch? Never one to pass up bacon. <laughs> I agreed, and she sent me to the store to get the needed supplies. I got in the car, and I started to drive, and by our house, there are three different turns I can make and still get to ShopRite. So I chose to turn right on Southwest and then left on Main Street. When I got to ShopRite, there was a bunch of parking spots open, and I thought to myself, do I choose to park closer to the door, or do I go farther back and surround you know, so I'm not surrounded by the other cars. So I chose to go a little bit further back, get a few extra steps, and I could have another slice of bacon. <laughs> Inside, I had three choices to gather my groceries. I had one of those little Dorothy carts. I don't know what they're really called, but I call them the Dorothy baskets. Or I get one of the mini shopping carts or a full-size one. I chose the Dorothy. And BLTs only really have a few ingredients, right? So I had to pick the tomato first, but there were three kinds that I thought could work for BLT. And I wasn't sure what kind Deb wanted, so I got the beefsteak and the Roma. The lettuce, didn't have to make a choice, but just so you know, there are three kinds of chop right too. Bacon, we always go with Oscar Mayer, but the black label is on sale, so do I switch and purchase black label? No, I thought to myself, I'll stick with Oscar Mayer. So I thrummed through all the packages to choose the one that had the most pleasing fat to meat ratio and put it in my Dorothy basket. And then cheese. Have you ever thought about how many kinds of cheese there are at ShopRite? There must be at least 30 or 40 different kinds. So I thought to myself, do I go get the pre-sliced? Do I go to the deli and have them do it? And if I do, what thickness and then how thick should it be? In the end, I picked Fontina and a mild cheddar. And bread, there are at least 20 kinds of bread. But I picked the Italian seeded because it looked good and it was on sale. And then chips. Can't eat a BLT without chips, but there must be 50 types of chips at ShopRite right now. Wavy and kettle and flavored and non-flavored. And I went with the Pringles applewood cheddar. 
And then I got to the checkout and I thought to myself, now, which row do I go in? There were two open, but I could go with the one where they had a lot of people, but a little bit in each basket or the one lady that had a lot in her basket, you know, that choice. Are you exhausted yet? <laughs> Are you hungry? <laughs> we'll be serving BLTs later in Fellowship Hall for those that are. So I didn't even tell you about all the choices that I made to go down which aisles and the choice not to get any Valentine's candy that looked really good at the time, but that was only 15 minutes of my life. And there must have been, what, 100, 150 different choices I had to make? Do I get this kind of cheese or that one? Do I park here or there? Do I get the Valentine's candy or do I stay good? This is our life, yours and mine. We are all blessed with an abundance of riches and a ton of decisions that we can make every single day. From what kind of cheese to buy to what to watch on TV. Think on that for a second. How many channels are on your TV or how many movies can you choose and stream whenever you want? And we have choices on Facebook. Do we stop and watch that video that our cousin posted on their trip to Florida? Do we read the article that our friend posted about the upcoming election? Do we comment on that Detroit News article or do we just give it a like? The research says that we face an average of 35,000 choices every single day. That means, assuming you choose to sleep for eight hours, you are making a choice every 1.5 seconds all day long, every day. And that's a lot of decisions to make, consciously and unconsciously, all the time. And what happens is, the more decisions you make, the more fatigued that your brain gets. And it's called decision fatigue. What happens is the interior cingulate cortex. Where's Aaliyah when I need her now? This, which is the willpower power of your brain. After so many choices during the day, it gets tired and it stops wanting to make choices. And the more tired the willpower part of your brain is, the more likely you are going to make choices that you normally wouldn't do. You slip, you cheat. You don't have that energy to bite your tongue like you should. You choose the path of least resistance because the path of least resistance means you don't have to make any more choices. If you ever come home from work and when you get home, you say to yourself, you know what? I don't feel like cooking tonight. Let's just go out to eat. It's not necessarily because you're too tired to cook. Rather, it's the willpower part of your brain that's so fatigued, you don't want to go into the kitchen and make all the decisions you need to, to make and cook. It's just easier to go out instead. Decision fatigue. We all suffer from it because we are all continually bombarded with the need to make choices all day long, big and small. Do I check my mail? Oh, I got an email from pastor. Do I reply? Do I delete? Do I save it? What do I do with it? We face in a continual exhaustive state from decision fatigue. And we are continually teetering on the risk of not having the willpower to resist sinning. Whether that be in thought, word, or deed, we, by the nature of our lives, are just one bad decision away from choosing to do something we would later regret. So I claim that decision fatigue is not a physical problem, it's a spiritual one. The more exhausted we are from our choices, the less likely we are to make good choices because our brains are wired to pick the path of least resistance. When we don't have the energy left to choose anymore, we often pick the one that's worst for us because often it's the easiest choice. Have you ever noticed how easy it is to get angry and frustrated when you're hungry or when you're tired? More fights with spouses happen in the evening than in the morning. Why? A large part is decision fatigue. The glucose your brain needs to feed that singular cortex has been spent all day long. You come home tired, you want to be left alone, and you're slightly irritable because you don't want to make one more choice. 
You get home and you walk in the door and your spouse says, welcome home. I'm about to start dinner. What kind of vegetable do you want? And you blow up at them with a loud, I don't care. Have you ever blown up at a simple question like that? Humiliated, you ask yourself later, why did I blow up over something so dumb? How often do affairs start simply because the spouse doesn't feel like they have the energy to face life at home anymore? It's easier to cheat than it is to make all the choices at home to fix the brokenness or to cheat on taxes. People are honest, I believe, but they get working on those supplemental forms and they say, this is too much and I'm just going to make up some numbers. And then that least path the resistance worked before, and I do it again this year. Or how fantasies of a different life, a better life come easiest when we're tired and frustrated and sick of the way things are going. Sometimes fantasizing about a life that runs counter to you know what is right. Or how easy is it to judge someone else for their actions without taking the energy and the time to hear why they're really that way and understanding their perspective. When we don't have the energy, when we don't have the ability to say no, when we don't have the energy and we don't have the ability to say yes, it's not that you don't want to help your neighbor. You're just too tired after a long day. It's mental and emotional exhaustion. So how do we live as people of God then? You heard the readings this morning. These are pretty serious. How do we live into that when we're teetering so close to sinning all the time because we're fatigued? Look at the laws of the Old Testament, the laws we know we should follow. How do we walk in obedience to what the Lord expects of us? How do we not cheat, steal, or lie? And then we have this passage that Jesus said this morning, says it's not only your actions, but also your thoughts that are sins. Jesus says your thoughts are just as bad as your actions. Here we are struggling to make good decisions, and now we also have to wrestle with keeping our thoughts pure too. We want to be good, but we can't. Have you ever felt that way? You're given a temptation, whatever your personal temptation is, and how badly, how badly you want to stop, you just can't shake it. And it all comes down to decision fatigue. Our mental exhaustion causes us to be spiritually unfaithful to God. So what do we do? Well, one thing we could do is we can limit some of our choices. Simple changes like eating the same thing for breakfast every day or having a specific outfit for a specific day. So there's no choice. And when you limit your choices on simple things, it gives you the energy to make good choices on other things. And the most famous example is Steve Jobs. He wore a black cashmere turtleneck and blue jeans and white sneakers every day, specifically to remove one more choice from his life so he could focus better on the other decisions he had to make. Why worry about clothes when he could save his brain power for something more important? So that's one way you could do it. Another is to find and make choices in your day before you get there. For example, if we say to ourselves, I'm going to do two devotions today while I drink coffee in the morning, or I'm going to read one chapter in the Bible during my lunch break, it really does free us from making a choice later on, and we're more likely to do it. Have you ever said to yourself, oh, I will start exercising, but never really get started? Or you start for a while, but you quit a few days later? It's decision fatigue. If you say to yourself, I will exercise every day at 7 a.m. for 30 minutes, your chances of success go way up. There was a spiritual program that Deb and I did a lifetime ago called 10 Brave Christians. It was all about making better Christians by starting intentional disciplines. For example, in the program, all participants were expected to get up and pray every day from 5.30 to 6. 
even if you aren't a morning person, it worked. Why? Because the choice was already made. You didn't have to try and decide when during the day you were going to carve out those 30 minutes. You've made those choices. You've indicated to yourself that you're going to do them. You have a greater chance of success. But the number one way to combat decision fatigue, and this truly has been verified and proven scientifically in multiple studies, the number one way to combat decision fatigue, to make good choices during the day, to have the willpower to say no when you need to, or yes when you do, is prayer, spending time with God. It has been clinically shown to reduce decision fatigue. <coughs> Finding time with God, resting with him, reduces that exhaustion that you have. It gives you strength and the ability to recharge to make better choices during the day. Those that have a healthy prayer life have greater willpower and do better on diets and they make better choices all day long. So if you ever wanted to be more like Christ, if you ever wanted to act like he did and be as close to God as he did, well, he prayed a lot. So maybe that's been the secret all along. The chance to better ourselves physically, emotionally, and spiritually is rooted in a regular, intentional, scheduled prayer life. To walk better with God, to better guard against sin, we need to have an active and robust prayer life. Can't get started praying? Pre-schedule it. Make it a priority. Do it at a constant time and pick a consistent amount of time. Five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, but remove those choices. Next week, we're going to start our 40-day prayer journey through Lent. And before you begin, I challenge you not only to participate with the book, Draw the Circle, but to also be intentional about when you're going to do the study. Pick a consistent time each and every day. 15 minutes is probably all you'll need. And I would encourage you to do it at the beginning of the day, but do it whenever is best for you. Be consistent, be intentional, be faithful in reading and praying every day, and let's see where we all end up together. Let's see where we are as a church by Easter. And I'm choosing to pray for you, and I hope you choose to pray for me. Amen. Closing hymn this morning is I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. It's in the thin hymnal on page 21, 29, and it'll be up on the screen. Please stand. choices, people.